I was glad he went on and ended that because I wasn't going to hit that high note. <laughs> and highly, highly, you got to be able to get up there. Yes, sir. <laughs> but thank Edgar for leading us in songs of praise. I know y'all looking at me funny, but it's time to suit up. Right. I told y'all last Sunday I was going to dress for war. I meant that. Yeah, yeah, we will start our spiritual warfare series. And uh, I need you to know and understand that we are in a war. Yeah, we are in a fight. And so it's time to suit up. It's time for Christians to get their minds prepared for war. Is that all right? That's all right. See, I got a couple of soldiers in here. My mama back there dressed for war. Well, you know it's something when your mama dressed for war. She got her fatigues on. She's ready, y'all. <laughs> oh, Cindy came in here ready. Yeah, Brother White got his stuff on. Now, now, hey, we're going to work on you, nigga. We're going to work on you. Ron, I said, look at Nelly. Listen, the dog I got her, she got some camouflage going. That's all right. Look, we're going to wear it. Look, we, we, I'm, I'm ready, y'all. I'm ready for war. And, and, and that is what we got to remember. We've got to remember that the warfare that we're in, God has equipped us not to be on just on the defensive, but to also go on the offensive. Amen. Sometimes we are reactive. Yeah. Uh, when stuff happens, but God is saying, no, I've given you enough armor and enough war uh, uh, weapons that you can go on the offense. You don't, got, you don't have to wait on the devil to knock on your door. Yeah. You meet him right where he is. Isn't that right? Yeah. <clears throat> and so we are ready for war. We are ready. Look at Ephesians. Touch that with me quickly. So Ephesians chapter 6. You go ahead to the next slide, Travis. Ephesians chapter 6. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6. Look at verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand firm against the schemes or wiles of the devil. Yeah. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against powers, against the world forces of this darkness, and against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take a the full armor of God so that you may be able to withstand or resist <coughs> in the evil days and having done everything to stand stand firm therefore having girded your loins with truth and having your, and having put on the blessed breast for a of righteousness thank you, you may be having your seat this means war uh, some time ago I was playing ball under the, the great, the late, great Russell Ellington, uh, we were preparing for a game, a championship game. And I remember uh, usually, uh, those of you who are in the sports like me, you, you know that even at the high school level, and the college level, and the pro level, they have a series of coaches. You ever wonder why they have all of those coaches lined up? And that's because each coach has a function. So you have the head coach, and then you have the the assistant head coach, and then you've got all of these other assistants, and what they usually do, uh, you have one who is a defensive coordinator, that, or in basketball, you have a defensive coach and a scouting coach, and what they do, they scout the team. They look at everything about that team. They look at their tendencies. They look at their strengths and weaknesses. They look at what that team wants to do, what they do best, and the strategy is to take away from that team what they specialize in, what they do best. And then you have other coaches who are player development coaches, coaches who come up with offensive schemes. You've got all of that that they look at. Well, we were preparing for a championship game against Middle Georgia, then Middle Georgia College. And so uh, in preparing for the game, we all broke out into our stations. The guards went to their stations. The Small forwards to their stations, the power forward and the centers went down to their stations. And I called Coach Ellington over. I said, Coach, I need to ask you a question um, because I'm kind of confused on some things. I said, we are preparing for a game, a championship game, uh, but we haven't watched any film. And I noticed that we haven't watched film. Why is that? We need to be watching film. Now, he didn't get upset with me. He said, he just looked at me with a straight face and he said, son, the reason I don't watch film is because when I know the philosophy of the coach, 
I can defeat the team without having seen them play. Well, I need you to understand something. You have a devil that you can't see. You have an enemy. You've got demons in a realm that's unbeknowing to you. You can't see where they are with the next eye. <clears throat> you can't figure out what these demons and the devil is doing in this spiritual realm with your five senses. Yeah. Therefore, it's incumbent upon you to know the philosophy of your enemy so that you can know how to navigate and, and effectively fight this spiritual warfare that we're in. Am I making sense to you? Yeah. You need to know this philosophy. What is his philosophy? I, the devil has come to seek, kill, and destroy. That's his philosophy. He doesn't care how good you look. He doesn't care how educated you are. He doesn't care how much money you carry around with you or what car you drive or how big your house is. The devil, his philosophy is to seek, kill, and destroy. Are y'all with me? It doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are. Is that Asia? Hey, Asia. <laughs> to seek out, to kill, and destroy. He is not in line to be your friend. He is not going to bat for you when you mess up. He is not, you've never heard the devil say it was Fred's fault. That's why it's my fault that I got Fred to disobey you, God. Never will he be your friend. Never will he go to bat for you. And never will he, his objective be to make you better. It's always to bring you down and to you. Are y'all tracking with me? Your families are under attack. Your marriages are under attack. Your relationships are under attack. The church is under attack. And you need to suit up, make up in your mind that I am not going to wait until the fight comes to my doorstep. I'm going to bring it to him. Y'all hear me? Because this means war. Right? Now watch this. Can y'all all right, there are those who can't see, I'm going to read it for you. The scriptures are abundantly clear regarding the existence of a spiritual wall. We just read Ephesians chapter 6, right? Look at 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 5. Or though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not what? Carnal. Or but mighty in God for pulling out strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, watch this, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So don't think too highly of yourself. Don't become so educated that you get so high as God is that you then start to bring God down to your level. You need to understand that satanic at best and understand that we do not fight against flesh and blood. See how y'all get quiet? Because you think the person that's getting on your nerves is the person you need to be fighting with. You think that the person that's causing you problems is the person you need to be fighting with. When the reality is you need to look behind the person and understand what's the philosophy to seek, kill, and destroy. That ain't the person you're fighting with. That ain't nobody but the devil. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And so what he wants is for you to start fighting with the person and you that is the devil that's distracting you. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what's happening. And so he says, your weaponry, y'all, isn't carnal weaponry. So you don't bring, don't bring your knives to church. Don't bring Right? Don't bring your pistol. Don't bring that 38 or that 45 or whatever you got. Don't bring that because you're fighting with the wrong weaponry. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying you don't have the right to protect yourself. You do. That's your constitutional right. All right? You have a right to carry. But, however, when you start fighting carnally, when you start fighting, when you go word for word with people, when you, when you start blessing out people, do you not know it's at that moment the devil is at that point using you? Yeah. 
Yeah. When you get upset with a person out in the church building and you walk out and you refuse to speak to them, that ain't hurting a person, but you're being used by the devil. Yeah. And he's and here it is. He wants to control and destroy even relationships amongst Christians. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah. And so now, watch the circuit. Now, here's what you got to get. Go up, travel some more. Yeah. Notice this war that Paul spoke about, it ain't in apocalyptic terms. It's not, uh, it, but it really is a tangible reality. He didn't say, he didn't use language like <coughs> John would use in the book of Revelation, right? Where you got to kind of think, thumb through it and work your way through it. No, he says, here's the warfare. It is not with flesh and blood. But it's with principalities, powers, rulers, in dark places you can't see. So I remember I told you a while back, just because your dog is barking doesn't mean he's barking at the squirrels. If your pet is acting a little funny, doesn't mean necessarily they're acting funny at another pet. Could it be that there is a realm that you are privy to that there is some demonic activity going on that you don't know about. And he says, it is not flesh and blood, Sidney. Right. And so watch this. Now here it is. It's a spiritual warfare, which means it's more than a metaphor. He isn't just talking just to talk. No he is making up something. This isn't some fictional book. And let me say this. The devil is not a fictional he is not walking around with a pitchfork dressed in red, right, with, with horns on his head. No, matter of fact, Paul would say the devil can disguise himself as an angel of light. Right, right. Right? Watch this, watch this. The word war indicates by necessity, here are the realities. That it will be a violent struggle. In other words, you will have to fight. Amen. Secondly, strategies and tactics will be employed by, by the devil. Are you hearing me? Now, let me just fast forward. God's strategy was to send Jesus. That's his strategy. The devil will use different tactics and strategies. Now, here's what you got to remember. The devil is not stronger than your God. God is sovereign and God is in control of the world. I don't care how evil it gets. Remember that. Now, but what the, and here's the other thing. God can read your mind, but the devil cannot. So if he cannot read your mind, how is he going to get you to sin? He's going to send traps. He's going to dangle bait in front of you. Now, what is he doing? We go back to the sports metaphor that I gave you. He watches your game film. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He watches one Fred's game film, and he looks at the tendencies. He looks at what makes Fred ticks. He looks at what keeps Fred going. He looks at what tempts God. Follow me? So he watches your game film and he collects the film on your life. And then at the right time, at the most opportune time, either when you think you're the strongest or when you are at your weakest, he sends the bait. You hear what I'm saying? You're going to have to fight. Now watch it now. Trained soldiers will be necessary for both opponents. Which means he that the devil has his army, so does God. Amen. Every child of God is in the army of the Lord. Amen. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. But it's going to take training. You're going to have to know the philosophy of the devil, and you're going to have to know how he operates, and you're going to have to know the weapons to use. Amen. That makes sense? Yes, and you know the old adage, it's foolish to bring a knife to a gunfight. Well, that's true for the devil. And that makes sense for you to try to fight carnally, right? Worldly mindedly, and it's a spiritual fight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How you gonna cut the devil with a knife? And you can't see it. 
How you gonna deal with his demons with a gun? You just be shooting up your house. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? You can't see him. Yet he's real. And young people, he will use demonic influence in any way possible. He spares no expense as the sabotage use social media. He'll use the music industry. He'll use the movie industry. He'll use even your peers yes, to destroy your life. What is his objective? See, kill, and destroy. Now, here's another reality. The combatants in the war will die. Yeah. You may be wounded or you may even die. There may even be some Christians who may die in this war. Yeah. Well, that's a spiritual reality. Yeah. Are y'all here? Here's another reality. There will either be a truce or there will be a victor and a conqueror. Now, last I checked, God ain't in the business of making a truce with the devil. So we can scratch that one out, isn't it right? But here's the reality. There will be a victor. Y'all ain't said nothing. Amen. Let me say it this way. Because of your relationship with Christ, you are already a victor. Yes. The fight is won. You just got to make sure you put up a, a formidable fight. Yes. You hear what I'm saying? Christians operate from the standpoint of victory. Now, I know why you got quiet because you have credit. The fight is already won. Why? What is the need to fight? You need to fight because souls are at stake. Yes. Yes. This ain't just some, just some cute saying. Right. This means war. No. To fight because your daughters are at stake, your sons are at stake, your husband is at stake, your wife is at stake, your grandchildren is at stake. This is a war for your soul. Yeah, yeah. Next slide, Travis. Next slide. Yeah, yeah. Who are the combatants? Now, Ephesians 6 says the church is. Because when he writes the letter, he's writing to Christians, people who are already saved. All right. Watch this. And, and we are engaged in mortal combat against, watch this, principalities, power, against rulers of darkness of this age, against the spiritual host of wickedness, here it is, in the heavenly places. Now when you read Ephesians 2, 6, it says we Christians have been raised and we sit in the heavenly places with Christ. That's right. Yeah, we are, so that battle, y'all, takes place again in a realm you can't see. Right. Right? Yeah, when you fight with your spouse, you fight with that spouse, that's the devil. And what you're doing, every time you seek to carry out uh, some, some agenda, here's the thing, the devil is saying thank you. Whenever you go to bed angry, he is saying, thank you. Whenever you walk by your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, you can't stand them, you can't speak to them, and you go out and talk about them, you assassinate their character, he's saying, thank you. Because my objective is being accomplished. My mission, my purpose is being accomplished. Are y'all hearing me? Watch this, now watch this. Notice that our enemy is not a human being. Right. We fight against spiritual beings in heavenly places. So if this is a spiritual fight, and our enemy is a spiritual being, then just seem to me make good sense to you spiritual warfare. Right? right? right. Then, well, well, where are these heavenly places where we wage war? The word heaven would seem to indicate, y'all, glory, but how could our wretched enemy be in heaven? He's not. Notice the War broke out and Michael and his archangels fought with the dragon. The dragon is the devil. The dragon and his angels fought. They did not prevail, nor was there a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out. That serpent of old called the devil, Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now, if you ever ask, if you were you may have ever, you may have been asked this, or if you ever heard yourself saying this, <clears throat> well, why did God create the devil? Then what you're asking is the wrong question. Right. God never created evil. Yeah. Right. He created what we know as Satan as an angel of light. Mm -hmm. 
Satan chose to disobey and rebel against God. So God never created him to be evil. He had a choice. Even angels have a choice. Y'all yeah. get real quiet. Yeah. yeah. So if even with the devil having a choice to, to, to obey God or not, you and I have a choice. Yeah. Right. So you cannot use the adage, the devil made me do it. Now these heavenly places is used five times. Five times, Ephesians 1 verse 3, verse 1 verse 20, 2 verse 6, and chapter 3 verse 10. Now watch this. The heavenly place is a realm you can't see. Now as an example, I got up here Numbers chapter 22. You remember when Balaam, Balaam was hitting the donkey? Yeah. Y'all remember that story? Yeah, yeah. Now the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his, his uh, drawn sword in his hand. And the donkey turned aside out of the way and went into the field. Now, Protected from perhaps that car accident. Yeah. It was that the car was so good that it kept you safe. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Or when you were driving behind, you were taking a long trip, you fell asleep behind the wheel, yet you stayed on the road. Yeah. It wasn't that you just had good reflexes. No, it could have been, matter of fact, some dangers that had come your way that could have, that you didn't see, that could have taken. You out. Uh, so stuff we talked about. Well, that wasn't that wasn't good luck. Sometimes there are angels that help protect God's people. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so Balaam didn't see that. He didn't see that there was an angel of the Lord dispatched to stop him from going. And the Lord opened him. He opened Balaam's eyes and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand. Remember this one, 2 Kings chapter 6. Remember when they were, Elijah and his servant were, were in the house and the servant got up one morning and came outside and saw that the enemies had surrounded him. Y'all read the Bible, right? And he got scared and he ran back into Elijah and he says, Elijah, what are we going to do? Elijah comes out there <laughs> Now there was a physical surrounding them. What did Elisha do? He saw the angels on the that God had sent in his service. I tell you, y'all, there's a realm in which you can't see, but you don't have to be afraid because even though the devil is waging war, God is not going to let his people or his church fail. He's got some angels dispatched. For Fred, for Sydney, for Latina, for Edgar, for Rod, he's got angels designed to protect his people. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Alright, next slide. Between the forces of good and evil. And that evil raises in both the spiritual and the material. Now, hear me, let me clarify that for you. What happens, there's a war in this spiritual realm that we can't see. But guess where it's played out? Like? On earth. On earth. Right. That's it. So the war takes place. I can't see it. That's what happened to Job. Mm -hmm. There were some questions about Job's faith that he wasn't privy to. 
Right? It took place. Do you remember in Job 1 it says and the Son of God came before God? Right. And the angel came with him. I mean, and the devil came with him. And, and God says, now where have you been? You old rascal. That's Fred's translation. <laughs> where have you been, devil? To and fro. What is he doing? Seeking, killing, destroying. Now, he said, well, have you considered my servant, Job? Yeah. And he said, well, I would, but you got to hedge around him. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, that conversation between God and the devil, Job didn't hear. No, he didn't. Yet, it took place in a spiritual realm, and it was acted out on earth. Y'all hear me? Yeah. All right. Now, I just need a, this is just the preliminary stuff. Notice this. The devil strikes to wound God in the only way that he can by striking those he loves. Yes. That's, it. Yes. That's us. Isn't that right? right? See, sometimes what we do, we ask, God, why me? Why did my baby have to die? Yeah. Why did my spouse have to die? Why did this have to happen? Why did this calamity happen to me? And what the reality is, is Satan who's waging the war. Yes, and what he wants to do is cause you to renounce your faith in God so that he can go to God and say, I told you what who they said they were. Yeah, right? that's it. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Notice the question that, that, that Satan asked Job. Does God, I mean, does Job serve you for nothing? Right, yeah. In other words, everything, the only reason Job is serving you is because of what you've given him. Yeah. Yeah. You blessed him with wealth. Yeah. He has a family, yeah. right? He has a wife who loves him. All of that, that's the only reason he's worshiping you right now. Right. Right. And then Satan asked if you lower that head, though, I'll encourage you to your face. Yeah. You see what's happening? It's a war. Now, man, excuse me, as in every war, this conflict is fought over an immensely valuable commodity that both sides crave. One fights to keep it, and the other strives to take it away. Next slide. What's the commodity? Our soul. You got a war, y'all, and what he wants is to take it. Now, watch this. God wants to keep it. He wants to bring everybody into a same relationship with his son. And he sees every soul as a precious commodity. Well, the devil wants to take it away. You hear me? All right. Um, our God and Satan are fighting for control of a precious commodity, the souls of mankind. Do not skip over that. The reason we are in a war is for the battle of souls. God wants souls to be saved. Satan wants souls to be lost. Now, here's how he gets to that objective. He attacks our mind. That's what he does. He attacks your mind. Now, in the pre you know, as we move into the series, what I'm going to show you we're going, to, we're going to look at various uh, passages of scripture to show you Satan's tactic. We'll start in Genesis. We'll look at Jesus' temptation. We'll look at some others. But watch this. Every attack of the devil is to subvert your mind. Yeah, if he can distort your thinking, yeah. right, cause you to doubt or think something negative about God, then his, his battle is have won. All right. Now, watch this. Our soul was such great importance and value that Satan will expend every resource to retain control of us. And God will even sacrifice the life of his son. Now, watch this. God spares no expense at saving us. Well, you got to know the devil spares no expense at his destroying us. That's a good point. Another way of saying it is by any means necessary. So if he can destroy you, he will. And he spares no expense. You hear me? Let me give you an example. So my, my, my grandbaby, Amir, um, is very intelligent. And so she picks up on stuff as most young kids do. 
Now, when you, you've got these iPads and, and these telephones, right? Yes, sir. And really, man, they tell you, you should give your child that stuff at such an early age. Because what that's done, all those videos and all of the things that the images they see, it's going on the computer like that. And what it does is it wires their mind. So now, when you get them in a controlled setting, their mind is still wired. They can't sit down. So you think they, they got ADHD. When the reality is, no, that computer or that phone has programmed and rewired their mind that they can't sit down. They're operating like a computer. And then, God forbid, as they begin to use they fool around and they click on something that's grossly forbidden. Well, once that image is in their mind, it's like a computer, it's hard to get it out. Amen. You follow what I'm saying? So, what, so up here, what, now she, God, thank God she didn't click on something like that. But what was happening, she was batting her eyes. And then she would grab her head like she was having a head. And I said, you know what, Brianna? Take away that iPad. And stop allowing her to watch TV all the time. Right. Let her go outside. Let her play the way we used to play. Right? Matter of fact, when we went outside, you, you, they ain't give you nothing. Get on out of my house. Go out there. I don't care if you play in the dirt. Write your name. Do something. Man, y'all know I'm telling you. Matter of fact, we got so good at it. We used to make up things. Isn't that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, uh, after that, the headache stopped. She stopped batting her eyes, right? Now she's in touch with nature. You follow what I'm saying? Well, when you play video games for hours, that ain't nothing but a window for the devil. Because guess what he's doing? Reprogramming your mind. It's like simulation in the military. See, you know, when the pilots have to get in the planes and they steal it, that's what they're doing. So all those video games, when you spend hours on it, even us as adults, all it's doing is rewiring and reprogramming your mind. And it creates a window for the devil. Now, young people, I'm your friend. I know you got to have your game, but limit the time on your game. Perhaps get you a book. Right? Learn how to, matter of fact, I was about to say learn how to write your name, but we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't even write cursive no more. We don't, I don't think they even have that in the, in the English vocabulary anymore, right? No more. Learn, matter of fact, learn your history. Learn who you are and where you came from. You know what I'm saying? All right. I know y'all ain't okay with the reality. Get on social media. Let me do you another better. So sometimes what I do, you know, I don't care how positive the, the video somebody may put out. They put a video out, it can be positive. It can even be of a little child doing something. Read the comments. At some point in the comment section, somebody will say something negative. I'm telling you. And then all it takes is that one negative comment and then you can see them going back and forth. It just keeps going, negative, 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 negative. You know why? That's satanic. Yeah, yeah. He's getting, now watch, he's getting people to fight with each other and they don't even know each other. Nope. Perhaps don't even live in the same city or state. Nope. That social media is a satanic. Now it can be used for good or it can be a device and tool of the devil. Y'all right. hear what I'm saying? So everything, yes sir, yes sir, <laughs> and them TikTok videos. Nah. Well, see some of y'all been making them TikTok videos. <laughs> That's why y'all got quiet. <laughs> every, every evil thing in this world thereby serves but one purpose, to turn mankind away from God and to separate the Father from the love of his heart, which is us. Yeah. Everything, hear that now, everything evil is designed to turn us away from God and to keep us from being the apple of his eye. Yeah. 
Okay, all right. So, oh, next slide. Yo, okay, here we go. This is this one. As participants in this war, soldiers for the cause of Christ, what is it that matters to us most? That's the question. What is the motivation for our warfare and why do we fight? Yeah, it is. We fight for them, the mother, the politician, the drunkard, the homeless, the corporate executive. Every battle and great struggle is to rescue the perishing from the clutches of Satan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now my question to you is, why do you fight? Yeah. Or why haven't you gotten into this war? Right. Good question. As followers of Christ, this must be our most imperative mission. It must be our greatest passion. Do we think about people in this way? And do we see them as the most precious thing in the world? How do you see people? That's a good question. Do you see them as precious commodities? Do you see them as a soul? Or you just see somebody that you can just walk on, walk over, and walk by? Mm -hmm. All right, that's a good question. All right, that's good right there, Travis. Now, let's land the plane. Finally, brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now, that's an imperative, and an imperative is a command. Mm -hmm. So when he says, finally, be strong, that imperative command is also in the passive voice, which means strength is being endued to you. Well, Fred, how am I to be strengthened if I'm passive, if I'm the passive recipient of this strength? Finally, brother, be strong and in the power of his might, right? The strength or the might that comes only from God. Now watch, it's located in Christ. So therefore, this power that Paul tells us to be strengthened by and with does not come from any other external source except for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You can't get this power from any other thing except Jesus Christ. Right. Money, shopping sprees, drugs, alcohol, womenizing, menizing, if that's even a word. <laughs> it is now. It doesn't come, that power doesn't come by any other source except the spiritual source, except your connectivity with Christ Jesus. Finally, brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of your might. Be strong. Present tense, keep on being strengthened. Watch this. Put on the whole arm. Another imperative. So he's telling you two things you need to do. Be strengthened in the power of the Lord. And then he says, put on the whole arm. Not some of it, but all of it. You're right? Put on. Now, this imperative actually explains how you are being strengthened as a passive recipient. So when you compel yourself to put on the full armor of God, it is at that point that you are expressing being strengthened. That's right. Amen. So failure to put on the armor will leave you vulnerable and without strength. Right. So you can't say I'm, I'm, I'm seeking the power and strength of the Lord and you don't put on the armor of the Lord. Mm -hmm. It's genitive of source. Put on the armor of God, which means it's the armor that only God supplies. Mm -hmm. You remember when David, when they had to fight Goliath? Yes, sir. <laughs> and you remember, <clears throat> who was that? Saul? Yeah. Yeah. That tried to give David his armor? Yeah. And David said, no, man, I can't wear this. This isn't fit for me. Right? Well, here's the reality. If you're going to wear the armor, any armor for this spiritual warfare, you can't get it from a thrift store. You can't get it from somebody else. This armor only comes from God. Right? One take. That'll fit you right. Isn't that right? And then you're going to need, because this armor carries a lot of weight, Edgar, so you're going to need strength to carry it. Now watch this. This armor is not a fashion show. This armor is not a one-time thing. you got to wear this armor daily. You tracking with me? Put on the whole armor of God. 
Finally, brethren, be strong, be strengthened, continue to be strengthened. How? By putting on the full armor of God. Y'all with me? Amen. Then he says, and, and so what's the purpose? So that you will be able to stand firm. Now the word stand there isn't just meaning I'm standing and waiting on the devil. This is a combative standing. This standing is an aggressive standing, which means I'm going to stand flat-footed and firm, and when the devil starts to raise his ugly head in my life, I'm ready to put up a fight. Yeah. It shows that you are prepared. What happens to us oftentimes, the reason we fail in this war is because we, we, we go into it unprepared. You see that? Unprepared. Now he said, so that you will be able to stand, now watch it, against the schemes, the wiles, the methodia, the strategy of the devil. Yeah. Do you remember what happened to Judas yeah. when he betrayed Jesus? Yeah. He went, now you got to see the progression. Yeah. He started out with Jesus uh, and then all of a sudden that lady came to anoint Jesus and he said, why are we Spend, why are we wasting so much precious oil and ointment? Yeah. And then John says, he didn't say this because he cared. He said this because he was a thief. Yeah. Mm, now what does Satan do? Watch the game film. And what does he do? He puts in Judas's heart. He ain't going to make Judas do anything. But he dangles the bait. Because Judas has some tendencies in him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, you ain't cussing so and so out. You just formulated the word. Some of that was already in you. You ain't doing what you're doing out here in the streets all because it just came to you. Some of that is, and let me tell you, temptation isn't the sin. The sin is when you bite on the temptation, when you act. So a lot of times, what we harbor in our hearts it festers, it boils until the opportune time for it to come out. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. So Judas, he's, he's walking with the Lord. He's a thief. Yeah. He used to go into the treasury, y'all, and take money out. Yeah, yeah. Let, me, let me give you an example because y'all ain't feeling it. It would be equivalent like if we were still passing out the communion tray. It would, I mean, the collection tray. It, it would be equivalent to somebody going in there and taking the money. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So what he used to do, he used to pilfer. He used to go in. They put money into the treasury, and this joker take it off the top. You see what I'm saying? Now, what happens as time goes on, as Satan continues to dangle the bait, guess what he does? He goes to the religious rulers, and he said, read John chapter 12 and John 13. He goes to the religious rulers, and this is exactly what he said. How much will you give me to betray Jesus? Yeah. Now, on the surface, you'll be like, man, how could you betray the Lord? I mean, you've been walking with him. You've seen him walk on water. You've seen him feed 5,000. You know why? Because it was already in him. He just needed an opportunity to commit the temptation. You hear what I'm saying? They'll tell you how tricky the devil is, man. He will throw some stuff at you. He will send that fella to you or that girl to you, that woman, excuse me, to you. And you'll think she's the end all be all. You'll think he's the end all be all. And it'll ruin your life. And then you'll wonder, God, why did you send him? And God said, I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> Don't put that on me. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? I'm telling you, he's crafty. Yeah. Yeah. He is. Now watch this, watch this. Uh, he says, for we struggle, or our struggle, we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but against principality. All of that principalities, uh, uh, rulers and dark places, all describes and uh, uh, demonic influence and forces. Mm -hmm. But when he says we wrestle not with flesh and blood, he says the word wrestle is a Olympic term. When the Olympic fighters used to wrestle, what they would do, it carries the idea, when he talks about struggling, it carries the idea of that wrestler holding down the other wrestler right. and, and gaining victory. 
But watch this. Not only would the wrestler Miss Shirley hold him down to gain victory, but the loser had his eyes gouged out. Right. So that he would forever, he would never be able to see again. Let me tell you something. The devil is, he, and he would actually take him and hold him by the neck or by the throat and gouge out, gouge out his eyes. Mm -hmm. Now, that's history, right? I want you to know that the devil has some of us by the throat. Mm -hmm. And if you don't fight, he will gouge out your spiritual eyes mm -hmm. so that you can't see Jesus. Yeah, I know that's graphic, but that happened during Bible time. The reality is, he says, we in them. This wrestling, this fight, Edgar, is hand-to-hand -hand combat. Right. Mm. It's close, it's in close proximity. We've got to fight. And if you don't fight, he'll gouge out your spiritual eyes. Yeah. Right. You don't put up a fight, you're going to be in trouble. He will over the, and it ain't, look, when it gets hard and it starts to hurt, he ain't going to quit. Just because you say, all right, time out, time out. Right. No, the devil doesn't quit. Right. He will keep on until you are utterly destroyed. All right. All right. All right. He says, so we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, with principalities, power, with rulers in the dark places, right? Then he says, world forces of this darkness against spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly faith places. Therefore, now here's the next verb, take up. Take up the form of God, watch the purpose, so that you will be able to withstand or resist. Right? Now, that word withstand or resist means you go on the opposition. You go on the offense, should I say. Mm -hmm. This resist is to fight. When Jesus had to resist that devil in the wilderness, you remember? Right. Matthew 4? Yeah. Mm -hmm. when, it, when, when the devil tempted Jesus? Yeah. You're not. Now, Read Luke's account after Jesus uh, defeated the devil. Luke records it by saying the devil left him for a time or for a season, which meant he was coming back. Which means your just because you've got one victory doesn't mean you're gonna you cease fighting. You're gonna have to continue to fight. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah. So one victory isn't enough. You gotta constantly fight. Why? Because it's a battle for your soul. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. So, so that you will be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand, yeah. keep on standing. Yeah. 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 Keep standing. Yeah. Right? Keep fighting. Keep resisting. He won't quit, neither will you. Yeah. You keep praying for your family. You young man. You keep praying for mama. You keep praying for your husband. You keep praying for your spouse. You keep praying for each other. You pray for your community. You pray for the church. You pray that God's purpose will be carried out and we could win souls for Christ Jesus. Why? Because there is a battle for the soul and the way he wins the devil is by captivating your mind. This means war. Yeah. Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. Yeah, it's time to fight. We're going we're gonna to move for a little further into the next lesson. I saved some of this. I couldn't give it all to you. But we're going to move a little further because now I'm going to show you the strategies of Satan. Listen, you need to know, you know his philosophy to seek, kill, and destroy. You need to know that. But then you need to know something about your God. That God is all powerful. God is sovereign. God has sent Jesus to claim victory for us, right? right? And God will not be dethroned. Yeah. He cannot be defeated. So you need now the danger, there are two dangers. One is that you get so weak that you give up. That's one danger. Second danger is that you become so strong. You become calm, overconfident and cocky, right? You get so overconfident that you think you can handle him by yourself. That's why I do not believe in this theology, naming and claiming, and I bind the devil. You ain't binding him. 
If I speak it, it'll, I declare it. Declare what? You better declare war. You ain't binding the devil. You cannot humanly bind a being that God had to kick out of heaven. You can't bind him. I declare it in the name of him. Okay, well, keep on and he'll jump on you. And now, I'm not, now, I'm not being trivial about what people believe, but I'm trying to get you to understand, man, you can't bind a being that you can't see. And listen, if he, if he has enough schemes and strategies that he would use humankind, Pilot and all of them, to crucify Jesus, then what you think he'll do to you? Yeah, he'll kill you, won't he? If he, if he can, if his plan, now watch the all things work together for good. His plan was to kill Jesus, mm -hmm. crucify, take away the seed. God's plan was to raise him so that we could be justified. Yeah. See the plan, you see how all, now here you got to understand, see, because what we usually do, all things work together for good, Juan, and what we do is we mean that for material good. All things work to good, which means God can take that and make it work with this so that this can work with that. So that the that and the this will bring about his redemptive good. Yeah. Yes. See, we always apply working out for good to be material stuff. No, that's talking about his redemptive good in your life. Yes, sir. Yeah, the good, which means he can take the bad and the ugly mm -hmm. and the evil and bring about good for his people. Yes. Remember that, y'all. So, y'all suit up. Yeah. Go out there and get your t-shirt. Get your, get your something. Because this means war. Yeah. <laughs> it's time to fight. It's time to fight. And, and church, we'll go further. We'll look at that because I know I am what prayerfully by the end of this series will our answer for you uh, well, why does God allow evil? That's a major question that people ask, right? Especially atheists. Why, if God is such a loving God, and if God is so good, then why does he allow evil? So prayerfully, by, by, by the time we end this series, that question will be answered for you, okay? Amen. Yeah, so, so we'll deal with that. Um, but listen, I didn't get to it, and what I'll do, I'll come Ephesians 6, and I'll show you the armor that he expects you to put on. Yes, we'll peel each layer of those armors yes. that he, the weapon, should I say, that he wants you to wear. Yes. Alright? One of the weapons that he talks about is prayer. Mm -hmm. He says, make sure you pray. I think you gotta show what it says. Pray. Pray on it. Pray over it. And pray through it. Well, and, and, and that's how, that's the weapon. That's the most, well, it's a powerful weapon. Yes, sir. That, that he expects, God expects Christians to use right. in this warfare. Yes, Why? Because I'm fighting a supernatural being on earth. And I need prayer. My prayer is going to tap into the supernatural. God in human. He's supernatural. Amen. 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 And so if, so if I'm going to fight effectively in this warfare, I've got to use my prayer line to tap into the supernatural so that a God who holds all power can, can, can now intervene on earth and deal with what evil I'm dealing with. Amen. Amen. That makes sense? Yes, sir. You, you got to pray on it, over it, and through it. Amen. So it's prayer time. Amen. It's time now. Whatever has been going on in your life, let's pray about it. Yes, sir. But the devil won't quit. Mm -hmm. no, Doesn't care if you came to worship today. No, no, sir. No, he didn't care about how many songs you sung today no. and prayed. And he didn't care about it. He didn't care about the suit you wore and all that. He didn't care about this stuff. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. What he cares about is grabbing hold to your mind so that he can lay captive your soul. Right. So he don't care about all that other stuff. Right. right? He don't care about what, what you got going on on your job and all of that. He could care less. As a matter of fact, matter of fact, 
because you're in a realm, because there's a spiritual war in a realm you can't see, sometimes it would do you good to do silent prayers. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. Yeah. Don't always tell him what you're praying okay. about. Right. Right. Sometimes just pray it in your heart. Yeah. See that? See, I caught, yeah, I caught you that time. Yeah. I pray, I thought we were supposed to verbalize it. You can. Sometimes, though, try doing you a silent prayer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, yeah. Just, so, it's prayer time. But now, even though we're going to verbalize this prayer, we are believing God is able. Yeah. Yeah. God's got control of whatever it is I'm going through. No matter, y'all, God's got me. Yes, sir. Amen. We're going to pray about that. Now, if you're a child, if you're not, here it is. If you're not a child of God, if you're not a Christian, then you are operating powerless. Mm -hmm. Because remember, be strong in the Lord, which is where the power is. That's right. So in order to gain this power and to tap into this power, you've got to be in the Lord. That's it. So you've got to put faith in the Lord Jesus, come to him, confess the, that he is Lord, and be immersed, baptized into Christ so that he can now put you into Christ. And when you're in Christ, guess what? You are clothed with Christ, but you're also clothed with his arm. That's it. That's it. And his strength. But then, for the child of God, you've been trying to get power in all the wrong places. You've been looking for quick fixes, right? Self-medicating yourself. Power in all the wrong places. And let me tell you, if you if you try to depend on human power, mm -hmm. chances are it'll run out. So why not tap into a power that's unlimited? That that, that is unlimited, yeah. right? Why not tap into a power that you can't exhaust? Amen. It just keeps on running, mm -hmm. right? That kind of power that invigorates you, man. Y'all ain't had time, but when you get a chance. You read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18 and 19, and Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16, and watch how Paul describes the power that works toward us and the power that works within us, right? And it's that same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Yes, That's the kind of power we have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It works on our behalf and it works through us. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Won't you tap into that power? Why don't you why don't you come and say, Lord, I'm gonna pray this thing. I'm gonna pray and tap into this power. I need you to move now, God, in my life. I don't know how you're gonna work it out, but I'm gonna trust that you will work it out. I need your if you need to respond, Edgar, are you ready? If you need to respond, I pray so as together we stand and we sing the invitation song. When